Hello everyone, it is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. And I know it has been a while since I did a deck analysis, but we're back. And I've been focusing on lots of other things going on in the channel right now, doing a lot of streaming over on Twitch. Be sure to follow us if you haven't already, because that's just getting more and more popular. And uh, is going to be something that we try and focus on even more as we progress into 2018. But we are back on the deck analysis, and this is going to be one of the decks that is going into the Memphis Regionals has a big question mark over how well this deck will be performing, and that is Vikavol Tapu Bulu. It seems to be one of these cult decks that a bunch of people really, really love or really, really hate. For some reason, it's just got a lot of tiger on its back for different reasons. Um, and today, I'm going to be profiling my list, and uh, one that I've been trying out a little bit here and there. Um, a lot of the people jumped over to Tapu Bulu Vika Vault after seeing a couple of things happen in the London um, International Championships where we saw a deck predominantly with 210 HP Pokemon that tried to tank in Zoroark Golisopod doing very well. And also we saw a huge decline in Garbodor, one of the main reasons why this deck was struggling previously. So uh, it feels like the metagame has moved favourably towards uh, Vika Bulu, and that might be why some people will be opting to play the deck in Memphis. Now, um, there are still lots of question marks over the deck. It's a stage two, it's reliant on abilities. Even sometimes to hit numbers against things like Gardevoir, you need to have Kakuis as well. So you can see my list is quite different. It's actually playing a 2-2 Octillery line, and this is something that not everyone's adopted, um, but I feel like the format is in a good place for Sushi Master right now because Garbodor has declined so much that you can really benefit from Abyssal Hand in most games. And it has been performing quite well for me uh, in my testing with the deck. I've only had around 20 or so games with it. But so far, my only losses really were to Guardi so far. Uh, literally, my only losses have been to Guardi. I've won against everything else that I've played so far. Uh, and in my earlier bit... Li uh, in my earlier lists, uh, I had uh, only one Kakui, and then I was trying out different Pokemon techs and stuff like that. Now I'm slightly happier with the two Kakui and the Mew as my techs, and I'll talk about why that is in a moment. So let's jump into the archetype. It all revolves around this Stage 2 Vika Vault that has the Strong Charge ability. Once during a turn, you may search your deck for a Grass and Lightning Energy and attach them to your Pokemon in any way that you like, then shuffle your deck afterwards. It is amazing to search from the deck because it means we don't need the stuff physically in our hands or anything like that. And it means that we are thinning our deck throughout the game as well. So as soon as we get our Vikavolt online, our deck becomes much better. It does also have a 3 retreat cost, which is beneficial to note because we do play a heavy ball in here. So it's quite easily searchable. And it has the Electro Cannon attack, which does for a uh, Lightning and 3 Colorless. 150 and you discard 3 from this Pokemon. The discard is obviously mitigated by the fact that you'll have strong charge to follow it up. And with a choice band, this can hit 180 damage. Definitely worth noting with Tapu Lele's around, you can get a cheeky two for one, especially because we play two Kukui and four choice bands. So we can definitely prey on Tapu Lele's even with Vika Vault. Although Tapu Bulu is also immense at doing the same thing. So we are playing a 3-1-3 line. Charger Bug also has that three retreat cost. So good for the heavy ball once again. Char and the Grubbin, just 70 HP, decent. Um, two retreat cost is a little bit annoying, but that's all we have to deal with there. So a 3-1-3 line. Supporting that, the main attacker of the deck is, of course, Tapu Bulu GX. Uh, has been touted as one of the best attackers in the game right now, just because the numbers that he can throw out, whilst also discarding from himself, making it difficult for Gardevoir GX to prey on him very easily. They are often the ones committing energy on their side of the board, or overcommitting is the hope at the very least, so that they can reach one hit KOs. Bulu has 180 HP and has three attacks. Horn attack for just a grass energy does 30. This can do good early pressure. It's great against uh, Froakies, obviously. Uh, even Frogadiers in combination with Professor Kakui that we play a couple of, which is really good if we're going to whiff on um, Vikavolt on turn two, which can happen, of course. Um, this also does early damage against Rolts, uh, even if you're not taking knockouts on the Rolts. You're then setting them up, if they ever do rare candy into Gardevoirs, for a Nature's Judgment, which is the main attack that we have here. For two Grass and a Colorless, you deal 120, and you have the option to discard all energy from Tapu Bulu. If you do, you do 60 more damage. So a baseline of 180, very, very strong, dealing with things like uh, Volcanians and such. 
uh, Drampers, although they are becoming less popular in the format, it's still a golden number for a lot of things. Again, Tapu Lele. And uh, yeah, doing this discard with Choice Band means you are now one hit KOing the likes of Golisopod and Zoroark GX, which is obviously humongous and really important in a metagame like this. Um, again, with that Choice Band or Kakui, you can be knocking out things like Buzzwall as well. So Nature's Judgment, really, really powerful attack. And he also has a very strong GX attack as well in Tapu Wilderness, which deals 150 and you can heal all damage from this Pokemon. Uh, so this is really nice. <coughs> it means that you're not forced to discard energy at times if you need to hit some slightly better numbers. Again, just like the Vika Volt with a Choice Band or Kakui, you can push yourself into better numbers. And it means that you remain a little bit more tanky and most importantly, keep the energy on yourself so you can spam Nature's Judgment the following turn without being reliant on the Vika Volt. So it's a very, very good GX attack to be aware of and is the only GX attack we'll use in this deck. Next up, we have the supporting cast of three Tapu Lele GX. One to tag, going to be really important for grabbing ourselves the early Bridgets as we are a stage two deck. And also we're playing a thick stage one line as well for more support. So trying to grab multiple Grubbins, Bulu, and sometimes Remorades on top is going to be really good for you. Uh, so double Bridget, I think, is important when you're playing any stage two deck. We want to be quite consistent at getting this out. Tapu Lele is going to be helpful for that. And also, when you have Strong Charge available, there is always the option to use Energy Drive as well to, again, put things in a little bit easier range if it's something more difficult for Bulu to knock out. But also, um, it can just be a cheaper attacker for you as well. So, pretty good card. The one of, uh, like, sort of non X attacker that is being put into this list is going to be the Mew. Uh, Mew has Free Retreat, which is excellent. It, it means that Guzma is pretty much always live for you without any payments, which is nice. And it also carries Psychic Typing, which can, again, help out against Buzzwall, which is quite a popular archetype that's sort of budding at the moment. So it's pretty nice to do a two-for-one exchange against that deck. Uh, so it does definitely give us the edge. And uh, it has the ability Memories of Dawn. This Pokemon use, can use the attacks of any of your basic Pokemon in play. You still need the necessary energy. So it's basically a Bulu, but a single prize Bulu um, if you are charging up onto the Mew itself. And you can even copy Energy Drive if you need to as well. So uh, you're basically copying a Bulu that's on your bench with this guy to do a big blurb of damage and forcing your opponent to Guzma you the following turn. Really, really good stuff. And on top of being a free retreater and doing a two for one trade during the game, it also has the encounter attack, which lets us be sometimes a little bit more greedy with this deck. Uh, it states, search your deck for a Pokemon, reveal it and put it into your hand. So sometimes you can go for early aggressive Bridgets, especially if you've started Mew or have a way into the Mew with your one switch. I know it's a little bit niche, but it can happen. Um, you can go for the encounter or if it's your turn one, you can like pay retreat and then on turn two, you can encounter to get, grab yourself a Vikavolt if you have rare candy or something like Octillery to keep you consistent and get that online on turn two. So you get a little bit of added consistency by playing this Mew. And that's why I'm choosing this over playing something like Clefairy. Um, there's actually a couple of reasons. The Clefairy also has 40 HP. So it's one more, or sorry, one less Decidueye uh, Feather Arrow to knock it out and just take free prizes. Obviously, you barely ever want to put this into play against that deck, um, but it's something to be aware of. Um, additionally, yeah, a free retreater. Just this has more utility, I think, than a Clefairy overall. So that's why I'm playing this card. There are another couple of um, Pokemon that you can consider in this slot of the Mew, but I'm happiest right now with the Mew. I think it provides the most for this deck. From then on, we are playing a 2 2 line of the Octillery. I've already mentioned that Garbodor, in theory, is declining in play uh, because of the Zoroark GX variants that have been coming out of the woodwork. So Octillery being able to roam freely and get this value every single turn is incredible for this deck. It's going to help us cycle, make sure that we can keep getting into choice bands, helping us find our Kakuis, making sure we get into Energy Recycler and always have um, enough back in the deck to strong charge and recharge up our Bulus, etc. It also gives us more luxury to use cards like Guzma without being hugely punished. Uh, previously, many Vika Bulus were just playing Orangaroo. I feel like now we can get away with playing Octillery. The 2-2 line is a little bit thick. You could go down to a 1-1 and simply increase your support accounts. Maybe go to 4th Guzma, 3rd uh, Kikui, or 4th Skylar, something like that. I don't hate that at all, but at the moment I'm just happier to not price stuff. Uh, because from what I've seen so far with this deck, you have so much more control when you have the Octillery established. And it's very annoying for your opponent to deal with when this deck is such a powerhouse at taking one hit KOs they don't really have the 
a time to like gust this up and take a knockout because they'll probably fall too far behind in the prize race if they do that. So for the items we are just playing one of switch. Um, it's pretty important. It's nice because we have some heavy retreaters, the Bulu, the Vika Vault, and even the Octillery has a two retreat cost. Of course, you can naturally strong charge your way out of this issue. You can simply uh, attach a bunch of energy and then pay retreat. We have Guzma, so I feel like we only need one copy of Switch. It's very accessible because we play a high Skyle account. That's also why we play one copy of Heavy Ball. Again, great for Bulu, Vika Vault, and Charger Bug. And this is again Skylerable, so it can help make our combo to get the stage two out as quickly as possible. Um, so yeah, very good stuff. One of the reasons why this deck is doing much better, I keep repeating, is that Gabro is getting less popular, and that means that we can be a li little bit more cheeky with our field blowers and only play two copies. So we still have some out against that archetype, um, but we also have outs against things like Parallel City and other counter stadiums. That we don't want to deal with because we don't play any of our own. I still think two is an important count but with a decrease in garb we don't need to play as high as we used to and that's really what's given space for things like this artillery line that I've shoved in here. Two copies of energy recycler. I am really cheeky on this energy count. Only playing 10 is like one of the lowest I've seen from any Vika Vault Bulu player but I don't mind it when you have access to double recycler and Skylers and stuff. Again, it goes back to the Octillery. When this deck is a well-oiled well machine and running smoothly, it just goes very nicely. So you can dig out the recyclers to literally put back five energies that you've been taking off with energy, uh, sorry, nature's judgments, and then recycle them and then strong charge them immediately back into play. Pretty cool stuff. Four ofs of Rare Candy and Ultra Ball because we want to get these as consistently as possible to guarantee Vika Vault whenever we are able. And the Ultra Ball, obviously great for... Lele, it's also going to, in the mid to late game, lower our hand size so we can get more Abyssal hand draws. Very, very synergistic with the deck. I've already talked about Bridget when talking about Wonder Tag, and once again I'll repeat, we're trying to get multiple Stage 2s out, and sometimes multiple Stage 1s, and Bridget helps us get there. Two copies of Professor Kakui. This is, of course, integral for the Gardevoir matchup. It's what I said at the start of the video, it's one of the reasons why this deck isn't a huge consideration for many people. I think many people think it's not a great matchup for you. Um, with Double Kakui, you have the chance to have these swing turns where you can take a big one-hit KO. If you already have a choice band, you Kakui, and you discard all energy from your Bulu, you can hit 230. So if the stars align, you can get big one-hit knockouts, and that can be excellent for you. So that's why we are playing the Double Kakui. I think you need a good rubber the green to beat Gardevoir more often than not. Um, you are definitely better against the broken Gardevoir than you are against Sylveon because Sylveon has plea available and that can really slow you down, especially if you're choosing to discard energy from yourself, which oftentimes you need to in that deck because you don't want to have a free 90 damage for their Gardevoir to swing into your Bulu. So they can really punish that by pleaing up things like Vika Volts and making it hard for you to play the game. Uh, so... I think we much prefer the fact that there's a tendency towards Broken Guardi. So again, the format is shifting in favor of Vikabulu's strategy right now. Three copies of Guzma, cashing in on the things that we can take out very easily, things like Tapu Lele and other two prize Pokemon. Uh, three copies of Skylar, because we are such a stage two reliant deck, we want to make sure we can get into these candies and Ultra Balls and the combo pieces that we need pretty much. And then we are going to play four copies of N. So yes, this is a list that plays no Professor Sycamores whatsoever. You can definitely try and squeeze one in if you want to go down to two Skylar or a third or just three N or something like that. Or again, if you want to thin the artillery line, you can work in Sycamore for certain. But with this build, it means that you can literally use every resource without fear of them being discarded. So um, I really like the way this flows. N is more important, more often than not, to try and disrupt the opponent, especially when you have artillery to draw back up on your own side. Um, and at the same time, it's good early game refresh whilst not discarding things like candies or ultra balls or parts of the Vika Vault line. Uh, because you can see I don't have any Pokemon recycled in this list at all. Um, so that's why we're going for the end route rather than having sycamores that can be painful later down the line. So you literally have access to everything. The only discard we have available in the deck is via ultra ball. And from there, we are playing four copies of Choice Band. Really, really high count because you want to guarantee that you can take knockouts on these uh, Zoroarks and Glycopods, and you want to do it guaranteed, no questions asked. And again, it's more consistent for getting the blow up 
knockouts with the Kukui combination against Gardi. I think the numbers are just too important to hit right now. Kukui also means you can actually uh, one-hit KO a Golisopod even after using Armor Press as well, so that's something worth noting. And yeah, as I've said, the energy count is super low. 6-4 is on the greedy side for certain. There has been games here or there where I've uh, physically missed energy cards, and it can be frustrating when uh, strong charge isn't enough to get you into knockouts, and it can force you into more awkward uh, positions. But overall, I feel like I need to fit everything else that's currently in the deck, so I don't have any spaces for more grass energies. Uh, unless you, again, I'll go back to the 2-2 two -two artillery line being potentially too greedy on my end. I'll hold my hands up to that. Um, maybe thinning this down is the way to go and being a little bit weaker to prizing stuff, but so that you can be a little bit safer, bump up to a 7th grass and like another sycamore. Things like this are definite considerations that I'll um, endorse fully. If you guys want to go down that route, it can be safer. So let's look at some different Pokemon options. Clefairy is one that a lot of people have gone towards when looking to improve their Gardevoir matchup, Metronome allows you to choose one of your opponent's active Pokemon's attacks and use it as this attack. So, um, because Bulu discards all energy from self, the Gardevoir has to hit 180 on its own back, right? So, um, it needs to have 6 uh, energy on it, or 5 in a choice band, which means if you have Clefairy, so let's assume they have 5 in a choice band, the worst case situation, it means they're doing 150, then we go... Uh, 180, 210, and 230 with a metronome. So we can copy the Gardevoir's attack and take a two for one swing just by using the metronome. So it can go swimmingly for you as a way to try and balance that matchup. Again, it can be a lot better than the Mew against exactly Guardi, but it's weaker against a lot of other stuff. It does also have a means of sending stuff to sleep that can bail you out in weird spots. But I think overall Mew is probably the better option, but that's again up for debate. I'm happy to concede the fact that Clefairy is good in that matchup and it could be um, important enough for you to tech more heavily against. Both Tapu Kokos have also been used. This one uh, was in one of my previous lists, the ones I used in the Anaheim Open. Um, has free retreat as well, good HP, good bulk, great lead in the deck, and Flying Flip does get those initial 20s on, but I think because decks are playing parallels and they're playing four copies of Max Potion for the Gardevoir players at times, it feels a lot less useful. The GX has also been used at times. It gives you an extra switching card. We only play one physical switch. Aerotrail gives you a new way to move your active, which can be helpful. And at the same time, it moves the energy to itself. So you can use a different GX attack. Tapu Thunder GX does 50 times the amount of energy attached to all of your opponent's Pokemon. Not only is this good against Guardi for, again, a big blow up attack. It can be also very good against Volcanian decks as well. Do bear in mind that this is more of like a two for two trade more often than not against both those decks. Um, because you keep all the energy on yourself. That's why more people have moved towards Clefairy rather than Coco in these instances, so bear that in mind. But the Aero Trail can be nice. You could even simply cut your switch to be even more greedy and just play one Tapu Coco. That's also something that um, I'm not like fully against. Um, a couple of the cards that I'm not playing, Rock's Grit or um, Pokemon uh, or Super Rod, you could play either of those cards. Again, it's a question of space for me. Where do you cut these slots? This is something that has been in the list before. We play no Pokemon cycle at all. It is simply the energy recyclers themselves. Um, so if you feel like you need to play those cards, you can indeed go for it. Uh, if you feel it's a little bit safer, I don't hate it at all. And Sycamore, maybe just having one in here is the correct answer because we do have Wonder Tag available to us. Um, more often than not, it'll net the highest amount of cards. So. There may be times when you won't regret having just one in your list. Again, I can't really argue with Sycamore. It's one of the best cards in the game. I just feel like in this specific list, there are definitely really important counts that you need to keep hold of. And Sycamore can be punishing. But I think if you only play one copy, it'll rarely punish you too much. So uh, yeah, again, up for debate. And the final thing is uh, I would play with the energy count if I ever found spaces for anything. So yeah, that is going to be the list, and let's jump into some games with the Sushi Bulu, the new way, potentially, of playing Vika Bulu that I've been having decent success with, Gardevoir being one of the more difficult matchups, and it looks like that could be what we are up against. I can see a, a fairy and a fighting box, which means we could well be up against our first Gardevoir of the day, and this could put some rumours to bed instantly of how the matchup goes. So we do have a mulligan. Mulling away a hard Bridget is a little bit uh, dissatisfying. But this time we have ourselves 
some pretty good stuff. We actually have the turn two Vikavolt as well. Uh, we have the Bulu start. We have energy. We have Lele for Bridget. We can Bridget into um, Grubbin, Grubbin, Remoraid. Then we could go Artillery, Skylar, Candy, and get Vikavolt and be a swinging by turn two. So it looks like our hand is pretty ideal right now. And we are indeed against a Guardi player. They have led with Rolts. Let's find out if they're playing Sylveon or not. That is going to be one of the key important factors in this matchup. <coughs> Looks like they have themselves a Fair Energy and a Choice Band. They're going aggressively on us before a Professor Sycamore here. Getting rid of two rare candies is very good for us. It's going to really hurt their odds of getting a turn to attack off on us. For anything meaningful at least. We draw into another Tapu Lele, one of the things... That we do have going for us is that we play three. We have prized one of our Professor Kikuis. I can't believe they conceded there. That's so annoying. I really wanted to showcase a Gardevoir matchup. <laughs> <Urgh>. <laughs> Triggered. Okay. Let's uh, <laughs> let's get into another game as we grab ourselves a juicy Glaceon. Thanks so much, Pokemon. Oh, there's a Bridget on the line this month. I've got six days to get a Bridget. Let's go, team. Oh, we're up against Azul. I wonder if he's streaming right now. This is the second day in a row that I've just randomly faced Azul on the ladder. He's always on. Let's go first. I saw Water Psychic, so he could be playing uh, Greninja. Greninja is typically a pretty close matchup. Um, because I'm going first, I can just do this. Um... It really depends on how aggressively we can go, how many strong charges we can pull off. It does look to be frogs. We have to be aware of Tapu Fini as one of the things that can definitely slow us down. But if he uses Tapu Storm, then oftentimes we can just strong charge back again, um, unless he's storming away the Vika Vault. So these are things we have to bear in mind. Let's take a couple of Mulligans. And we're going first. So again, we can just do this. So still no Grass Energy in our hand is a little bit annoying. Um, we are just going to Bridget here. Uh, do we even need to Bridget? I mean, like, we have the Grub in Remoraid. We could just hold it, right? We have the turn 2 Vika Vault, which means we have the turn 2 Knockout, which means we don't really need to play anything. I may play the Lightning Energy just for the sake of playing it. Um, if he's going to Guzma us, how sad are we? pretty sad um, but we can't really play around it too much it's gonna be a stalling Guzma I guess we could attach to one of these yeah this attachment may as well go here it's one less card that we can draw into later on let's do it Sadness, he's going to end away a turn two Vikavolt. Let's see if we can get back into it. We have a Grass Energy, we have Ultra Ball, but we currently don't have a means into turn two Vikavolt. He gets himself an Ultra Ball, so he's still alive in the game. That's something. He could also have potential bubble plays. We do have Guzma Bulu, though, so we could get out of bubble regardless. He had to get rid of a Splash Energy, so I assume he has another one in his hand to bubble with. But no, he's not even going to attempt the bubble. We are just going to be able to go ahead, do this, put down the other Bulu. We are going to keep both Guzmas, I think. Because I feel like he might be needing to stall with a uh, bubble later on. Next turn. Uh, maybe keeping the lightning is still right. Just more safe this way. Let's grab Sushi Master and try and recycle this hand a little bit more. I don't want to uh, end because their discard was pretty painful. And I think this gives us a little bit of a safety net. Ooh, okay. Let's do these things. Grab ourselves Charger Bug. And we can go for the Horn Attack. Thanks to Weakness, we're dealing with the Froakie. 
pulling a Kukui out is really nice, actually. So even though we do have the turn two Vika Vault, we can Kukui KO this Frogadier. It's a small factor that actually improves our matchup a little bit more, which is nice. So he's just going to go for the Splash Energy dupes. And we have ourselves... So we could rare cat we could Skylar Candy Vika Vault. Um and Strong Charge. I think Kikui and starting to stack the bench up a little bit more is better. No, we should still stack the active. Yeah, yeah, we still stack the active. Okay. Let's get this going. Will Abyssal Hand. Get another Vika Vault out and get an extra attachment in. Seems pretty good. We don't have a heavy wall, but we can just get rid of N and Guzma, I think. We have to be a little bit careful with how many Guzmas we're losing. But I think the extra attachment's important enough right now. Maybe Kikui's the thing that goes. Keep the end round. Okay, let's just do it this way. You want to cash in on your strong charges while you still can. We don't have any more lightning energies available, but we can just strong charge one to the bench. Still thinning the deck of an extra card, keeping our stuff around, and we can Nature's Judgment without the discard. One of the best things about this is that it is a choose effect. So he's going to get the Splash Energy activation. We take our second prize of the game. Energy Recycler could mean that if we need to, we can use this. He's going straight into the Tapu Fini. Um, that's fine. The Tapu Storm goes back into the deck, of course. He's going to sick them all. He does play Espeon. There's a Brooklyn Hill. Maybe he can find himself a Star U at this point. Let's see how many evolutions he's able to achieve as well this turn. There's a Brooklyn Hill fail search. There's Greninja number one. Water energy. And a Tapu Storm GX attack. So you can see the uh, the trouble it can cause here. Drawing into a Lele isn't too shabby. He wants to start off by using a strong charge for certain. And let's have a think with this brooklet what we want to do here. The priority is going to get out another Bulu and strong charge onto it. I'm just thinking if it's best to... We could Lele Kukui and Tapu Wilderness to keep the energy on us so we're not weak to Shadow Stitching. We could Lele Guzma and use our second strong charge to retreat the Lele and deal with this Greninja. I quite like that. That feels like our best line. So let's just go for that. <clears throat> uh, do I want to draw first? We'll strong charge first. Guzma this guy, retreat out of here, play this recycler, 
get our artillery going. One of the last times we'll have it available because we'll be stitched out of the game later on. We can thin a card that we don't need. Attach an energy to the Vika Vault is a potential option. I think I'll keep it around because next turn we can bridge it and attach. So again, we will just nature's judgment without the discard for the knockout. Three Guzmas gone is the only issue here. We only play three copies, of course. Um, so if he wants to do more of that sort of frog protecting strategy, we can't deny it in future. But we are tempoing out quite nicely on this deck. It also means we can't take the juicy two prizes on the Feeny, but oftentimes targeting the frogs is the way to win the matchup. He's going to Ultra Ball away. A break, and it looked like some other pieces there to use his Lele to get himself out of a tough spot, it looked like. So it looks like he's pretty much just playing Michael Long's list. He's going to grab himself super odd, going to get back some of these Greninja pieces, definitely. Two of the Frogadiers and one Greninja. And then we're going to see a clean Sycamore. Again, it's a question of how many evolutions he can, can he find. He hasn't gone through many Evo sodas just yet. There's one of the Frogadiers. He's just cycled back in the deck. And an Ultra Ball as well. So he's going to have at least one Greninja. He's going to get rid of the Starmie. And a uh, E Hammer. E Hammer, not great in this matchup, of course. There's a Greninja. An attachment. Does he have another one to boot? No, just a shadow stitching. So very awkward for him. Uh, we are going to bridge it ourselves out of Bulu and start powering him up manually because that is always a play. Um, <clears throat> because he can only develop one Greninja next turn, we don't have to worry about any uh, shenanigans just yet. We will also commit a choice band to the active because I don't see why not. Uh, could also be just the Vika Vault because that's where it can actually help the damage. Okay, let's do it there. Um, and again, we don't need to tap a wilderness just yet, so we'll once again nature's judgment for no discard. This matchup used to be way easier for the Bulu player when they did play Fighting Fury Belts. It was very difficult for Greninja back then. Kukui back in the lists now make it a little bit more favoured once again for the Bulu players, but it is still really dependent on whether or not it can get that turn to Vika Vault. We are going to see the Greninja getting, uh, getting two out this time. So we'll definitely have to GX attack this turn. He also gets the Frogadier. So everything going well for him, but he's just so far behind damage-wise. We're also going to be able to get an extra attachment in this turn, so everything going well for us. Um, and we'll just GX attack here. Heal off all the work he's done, all his work surmounted to that 80 damage, and it's gone. So I think we should quite easily be able to wrap up the game, and there it is. Uh, nothing left for him to do there. So, nice win against Greninja. Let's uh, move onwards, and the deck was running pretty smoothly there. Let's see how else we can, what else we can come up against and see if Bulu can take it on or not. Octillery was helpful there for certain. We were holding on to the nuts for turn two, uh, but we got end out of it and were still able to achieve that Octillery and the Vika Vault. So we got good value out of those for a few turns while he wasn't able to Shadow Stitch. And uh, yeah, pretty decent matchup for Bulu overall. I think some of the worst matchups for Bulu are definitely still the Garbodor variants, and there's still the question mark over Gardevoir. I think it's fairly even against Broken Guardi if you are playing double Kukui. Um, but I think... Uh, I think against the Sylveon list, you're unfavoured. And I think if you play Clefairy... I think definitely if you play double Kukui and Clefairy, I think you're definitely even, I would say, on a personal note. Parallel at times. The parallel, because it's like a one-off, it's really weird. Its timing can really punish a Bulu player, but that's always sort of variance based on uh, based on when they hit their one-off. So we do lead with Mew, which is nice and flexible for us. It gives us Encounter available. We are going first, though, so not just yet. Looks like we currently don't have ourselves a turn one Bridget. 
uh, which is a little bit sad. One of the cards you can think about adding, which I've not spoken about just yet, is actually Nest Ball as a one-off because we play such a high Skyler count that can definitely be played. I was indeed doing that before... Um, Sorry, before before I put the Kikuis in the list, I had a Nest Ball and a fourth Skylar. Um, and it did make turns like this a lot easier, so you can just go ahead and grab Grubbin without much pain. But against a Desi Zoro, it's important to keep your choice bands for the Zoro arcs. Um, the Skylar may have to be for a slower route here. It might just be to recycle our hand, you know. Oh, man. Okay. It's a really greedy Bridget for next turn, but we could combine it with Encounter, and that's kind of what I'm thinking of going for. So definitely a slower route, but I don't hate it. When the Mew's in the active, I don't hate it too much. So let's go for the slower approach hold everything I think maybe bait a field blower but I don't think it's worth I guess it's one extra card out of that uh, if we're trying to set up the yeah okay okay and I'm not going to attach the energy just yet because we could still be punished by like a Lele DCE Guzma type thing or Floatstone Lele DCE if I was just going to straight attach to the Mew. So we'll see. We'll see. Skylar for Bridget never feels great, but... Ooh, they play a low and Vulpix, even though they're a Zoroark list. That's pretty weird. They have a Floatstone. Looks like they're going slow as well. Wow. Okay. Oh, maybe not. They have an Ultra Ball. <coughs> They're going to grab Lele. Going to grab their own Bridget just for two targets. Interesting. So you really wanted to develop that beacon. I guess he'll just go for two Zoroarks. Pretty interesting. Whoa. That is wild. It's time for big birds, huh? Very interesting. Double dart tricks. Didn't go for any Zoro pieces at all. Well, the top deck of Bridget is nice. Oh, sorry, the top deck of Lele is nice. We'll just go for the encounter. And grab ourselves the uh, Octillery. So next turn we can Octillery, Lele, Skylar, Skylar Heavy Ball, Candy Heavy Ball, Strong Charge and start going. Hopefully. The hand size is two Dart Tricks, a top deck card and a card that they already had. Probably a draw supporter. Evo Soda is going to get themselves Zoroark. There it is. And yeah, Sycamore. Pretty nice stuff. Can I see a trade? Getting rid of the grass energy. It's pretty good for us. We prefer him to get rid of those because Decidueye is a much better attacker in this matchup than it than the Zoroark is, because we can KO the Zoroark so easily. Maybe that's why he's gone such a Decidueye heavy route. Maybe they know the matchup well. The scary thing here is, of course, looks like they've got, them, got themselves a rare candy straight off the bat. Um, 
the scary thing here is we want to Skylar to guarantee a Vika Vault, but we also want to N away a beacon, because a beacon for two more Decidueye is going to start getting pretty out of control. I wonder where this ping goes. Probably the active. It could also be the Remoraid. Oh, wow. Going for the Boodoo. Fair enough. Fair enough. But because he has a Float Stone. Oh, maybe that's why he's done it. Because he has the Float Stone. Wow, he didn't go for a... He didn't go for double Desi. He's assuming we'll take a knockout this turn. What's a knockout, huh? So we can try and high roll a Vika Vault now off the top so we don't have to Skyler. The Grass Energy is still good here. it means if we do high roll off this end that I'm going to be playing um, oh, am I still going to Skylar here it's only one decidual and I imagine he can get into more just because of trades anyway if I N is it better if I just guarantee yeah I think guaranteeing is better Letting people get away with double beacon is pretty ugly, but I don't like the idea of just missing and being sad. I mean, we have... Yeah. Let's just play safe. We played slow already, this game. Let's just... Uh, guarantee stuff, shall we? Get ourselves that beaker bolt out. So, we have the option to go for a Tapu Wilderness GX attack on just 20 damage. Um, we have the option of charging two more onto the Mew, so we can energy drive for a knockout. We could retreat into a Lele and go all that way for an energy drive. And I think I like that best. The Mew can't one-hit KO a... Uh, A Zoroark because of resist, but it can still be useful, I think. So we know they have Lele, we know they have at least one Decidueye, maybe all three at this point. Uh, but then putting down an extra Lele could be really good for us. <laughs> It could be the prizes that we need later on. Potentially we could have gone slower there and just go for another encounter and grab ourselves another Vika Vault for this turn. But I think it could be punishable. Let's see if we can get into Field Blower this turn. Definitely going to be a priority for them. They only have one trade available. That's the best thing for us right now. That's the main thing we have going for us. Got rid of an Ultra Ball. Guess he doesn't need those now. We know he has a Lele in his hand. He still has the option for Guzma players on my Vika Vault as well, if he wishes. Here's another Zerua. There's the DCE. So 120 on the board, plus three Feather Arrows can KO this Lele. We are going to see a Sycamore. Special charge, one Guz uh, two Guzmas gone. Decidueye sometimes floats between three and two Guzmas. So that's something we do need to keep an eye on for certain. Hmm. 
We are going to see some feather arrows coming down now. Wow, targeting the Mew, it looks like. He's putting himself to a seven prize game as well. Interesting. See a float stone to the decidueye. And just a beating for 120. Skylar gets us another Vika Vault if we want it. Um, getting rushed a little bit by PTGO. Feels bad, man. We don't have our other energy recycler, so we have to be very careful with this. We're going to go for a strong charge. Skylar can get us... Yeah, can't really get us the Vika Vault. I think again it's going to be a one draw Octillery, which doesn't sound great. Would love a different supporter here. Mother Artillery isn't helpful. We're going to go for Skylar here. <clears throat> and now I think we'll Ultra Ball and grab ourselves another Vika Vault. So we can get this knockout. have lost a few energies in the process and we are pretty vulnerable if the artillery oh, gets knocked out next turn oh, I just got a random follow in the background thanks whoever that was <laughs> you're the real MVP okay we are going to pay retreat And go for a Nature's Judgment for the knockout. Now their early ping was very useful from them. It does keep the Bulu in pretty nice range for them. But I think we have to take the Tempo prizes here. Especially because he's now lost two Zoroarks. We're limiting the amount of trades he has available essentially is the main thing here. He can alternatively go for like three Decidueye pings here at a point later on in the game. So... Prize-wise, I still think we're a little bit behind. Designing to evolve into this stand-in Zoroark is pretty good for us, I would say. It's going to be an Ultra Ball. Looks like a deck-thinning Ultra Ball more than anything else. Decidueye and a Bridget goes to the bin. Not going to take any target. Looks like this is going to be just before an N or a Sycamore here. Yeah, just going to be an N. I don't dislike an N here. The Recycler is an important one of that we need to get back, but it looks like we did with a Bulu, so way better for us now. Choice Band's the next thing on the agenda, but we actually don't need that for a little bit. Uh, a little bit. So you can do two pings to the active, one ping to the bench, and KO with the uh, Mind Jack. He has to deal with a Bulu, he can't sort of half KO it because we have the Tapu Wilderness GX attack available. Yep, so he's going to do that two and one split and go for the mind jack here 
So our route to victory is going to be carrying this and then just bring up the Lele afterwards. You can go for a pretty clean uh, recycler here. The main thing we want to do is uh, play and end this turn so they can't Guzma for the win. Because they can of course ping the Lele twice and if they get like a DC or something they could deal with our bench a little bit easier. So we're going to strong charge. <coughs> and we're going to strong charge again. To get a manual attachment in, I think I have to be careful here. I need to think about uh, this. No, we definitely will because if the Lele gets pinged down, we need to have something to retreat when we Guzma, so that is important. We'll do this. We do draw into N, which is excellent. We can also thin a couple more cards Lightning Energy and Bridget, I think, are the things that go here. deck thinning strats uh, we actually shouldn't take anything here because we want to keep the Lele slot open for next turn and we'll play this N here so we have Lele and we have energy, so we have everything we need to finish out this game. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. So we would need DC Choice Band in order to take the knockout in response if we choose to go for a, tapu, a Nature's Judgment without the discard. I think that's what we have to do. Because I feel his route to victory involves the pings on the bench as well. So, so this one prize, Energy Recycler, could be really helpful for us closing this game as well. There is a lot of energy committed around our board. Let's see how they did off the end to three cards. They have themselves a Tapu Coco. Don't think that changes the win condition. They have to end us out of game currently. Need to grab some water quickly. There's a DC. Wow, they did super well off that end to three. DC and N. They chose not to attach it to the Lele though, so they're not backing themselves to hit Choice Band. Maybe it's because they don't play enough. Um, but we drew into Lele to Guzma for game anyway. So Looks like there's going to be one ping to the Lele to finish that off. With the Flying Flip, of course. Some going on to the artillery, it looks like. <clears throat> but that should wrap it up. Didn't even need the artillery to help us close out this game. Pretty nice. So the three retreat costs not being too detrimental in the end. We can wonder tag, grab ourselves a guz, guzma, retrizzle out of there. I 
and do the mighty Nature's Judgment, which is such an efficient attack cost, and that is why the deck is being piloted by some people right now. And there we have it. Uh, some good games of Boodoo there. I don't have time to do any more. It's a shame that that Guard of Wild player did concede. But the deck was working pretty nicely, and uh, I am quite happy with my build. I think it's doing good stuff so far. A couple more good wins there. Greninja is a favourable matchup. Decidueye Zoroark, not so favourable, I would say. Our opponent went, went for an interesting line where they try and deny the amount of easy prizes we had access to by limiting the amount of Zoroarks they were using. Um, but that can be detrimental by not having a way around N in the late game for them. So it's naturally an awkward matchup for them. I think sometimes attacking with Decidueye is a better route, um, especially if you have max potions available to you in that list. So little tip for Desi Zoro players, I guess. Uh, and there's always things like Devolve approaches that you can keep a keen eye on. Uh, do bear in mind, Grubbin has 70 HP, so it can be a little bit slow at times. But yeah, Bulu just hits big numbers. People need to play down Tapu Lele's so often, you can always punish them in the late game with that. And when you have Octillery, the late game uh, is pretty much covered for you. And as we saw, it was never really targeted. No one really had the time to do so uh, because of the aggressiveness that Bulu just exerts. When you get this powerful board state going, it is a really nice traditional setup deck. And uh, it really does remind me of good old-fashioned Blastoise with Black Ballista. And back then, all the best lists played a 1-1 Electrode line, and Octillery is just a better Electrode. So throw back to that deck, shout out to Blastoise, you're a hero. And uh, it's cool to get some games in with this deck because it is a very cool one. So let me know what you guys think about Vikabulu, and uh, thanks for sticking by the channel. I know it's in a bit of a transitional period right now. We're trying out a new Theorymon series that I don't know if any of you guys know about it, but that's been on the channel recently and we have been streaming a lot more than usual, but we are going to be back with all the traditional deck analysis type stuff, um, starting with this one and we'll be doing a couple more before Memphis as well. So keep an eye out for those. Subscribe to the channel if you've not already. For now though, it has been Joe from Omnipoke and I'll be seeing you guys next time. Cheers.